Hey guys, it's Amber, and I'm so excited to share four different ways that you can use the brand new Simon Says Stamp Poppies Background Stamp Set. This has to be one of my favorite backgrounds that they've come out with so far. You know that I love to color flowers, and especially large flowers, so this one really speaks to me. We'll Copic color, watercolor, and do some ink blending today. Let's go ahead and get started. Here's the stamp set here. It's Poppy's Background by Simon Says Stamp, and it's a red rubber stamp, which are so easy to use. It's on the cling foam. So you can either just adhere this directly to your glass mat, or you can also put it in a misty if you wanna do some repetitive stamping, or you feel like you may wanna stamp more than once. I went ahead and stamped the full image on an A2 size piece of Nina Classic Crest Solar White 80 pound in a Copic Safe ink and I'm using Copic B02 to fill in this background. I'm gonna do one layer of this color and then I'll come back and do some shading to the background later. I'll move on to the stems next. I'm gonna use a combination of YG03, YG63, and YG67. I'll have all of the colors and the paints and mediums that I use listed on my blog post and I'll have a link to my blog post down below in case you want more information on those. As always, I'll have supplies linked below as well. So I'm just doing some simple coloring and simple blending here. For the flowers, or at least one set of flowers, I'm gonna use R12, R22, and R24. I'm starting with the lightest color, which is the R12, and I'm not going all the way to the tip. I wanna keep the tips of the flowers very light, so I only want one coat of the marker on those tips, so I'll leave those white for now. Then I'm coming in with the R24 marker, which is going to be my darkest color. I'm keeping these flowers fairly light today. Poppies are usually more of a transparent, crepey kind of flower, so I didn't wanna to go too dark on them. Usually you see the sunlight kind of shining through them, so I stuck with some lighter flowers. Then I'll come in, and this is actually the only flower that I do this on, but I come in from the tips and add a little bit of definition to some of where the wrinkles would be in these poppies. And I don't know why I didn't do it on the other flowers. I think I just forgot, to be honest. So now I'll come in from the tips of the flowers and I'll blend back into the darker colors. So having the one coat of the lightest color on the tips is gonna help keep those nice and bright um, versus having completely covered the flower from the beginning. For a bit of variation, I decided I would do two different colors of flowers. For the other set of flowers, I'll use YR02, Y32, and E93. Again, keeping these kind of like a light creamy yellow with a bit of pink coming up from the base. For the center of the flowers, I'll use a dotting technique and use E71, E77, and E79. This is one of my favorite set of brown markers. It kind of has a cool tone to it, almost like chocolate milk. If you make chocolate milk, it's kind of that tone, almost a purpley brown. Here I'm gonna add some shadows to my background using BV20 and BV23. I put in the BV20 first and felt like it wasn't dark enough, so I came in with the 23, and then when I blended it out with the 20, it really lost a lot of that depth. The 20 bleached it out quite a bit. So then I'll come back in with more of the BV23, and instead of blending it out with the 20, I'll go back to the B02 to blend it out. So it's gonna have a lot more depth, like the flowers are casting a shadow. So if you prefer the lighter background, go ahead and do that. I also added sentiments to all four of these cards with the CZ Design Sentiment Strips Reverse Love. I am in love with these sentiment strips, you guys. All you do is you cut them up and they're perfect. Super high definition, really clear sentiments. I stamped and heat embossed the background stamp onto a piece of watercolor paper with Aztec Glints embossing powder from WOW. And then I proceeded to drop my permanent black ink onto, you can see like the ink pad like literally bounced onto the card, <laughs> onto the panel. So I just trimmed it down because I wasn't gonna start over. I have the Altenew Artist 24 pan watercolor set here and I just used a pipette of water to rehydrate the pans. 
and I'm going to create some yellow poppies also with some pinks in there. So I'm just using a selection of the yellows, mixing them together, and I'm doing a wet on wet technique. So I'm wetting the petal first with some water and then dropping in the pigments. And so I just wanted to warm up that ye yellow a little bit. It looked a little too neon for me. And then I'll drop in some pink. And I believe that's Tea Party that I'm dropping in. For some of the flowers, I started with the pink first and then dropped in the yellow. For the background, I'm using super saturated paint here. And this is the Seashores paint. And I'm gonna put in one coat of it. So this is a wet on dry technique. I didn't wanna add too much water to the background because I definitely didn't want a chance it's seeping into the flower. So I'm doing wet on dry. And then I'll drop in even darker pigment into the corners to create a shadow, just like we did with the Copic markers. So you can see that here. So that's where I pick it up just straight from the pan so that it's super saturated and drop that in. For the centers, I'm just using Rock Collection, which is the dark gray, and dotting that in there in between those heat embossed centers. And then for the leaves, I'm using a super bright green. I believe that's Green Hills. And I come in, same thing, this is a wet on dry technique with the first coat, and then I'll drop in a darker pigment. You can see I already had it mixed down there from another project, and I'll just drop that in. In order to line up my sentiment, so I already had my sentiment cut, I just put it in the corner of my score buddy to line it up and make sure it goes all the way to the edge because I didn't wanna cut any more off of it. And here you can see the up close detail. The colors are super rich and I love how this turned out. For the last two cards, I'm gonna do some really simple masking with post-it note tape. So I, I stamped this in obsidian pigment ink so it was nice and dark and crisp. Make sure that you let that dry completely before you ink blend. Um, the first time I did this, and I do have pictures of that card too, I smeared it a little bit because it wasn't completely dry. So I'm just using Warm Sunshine Krista ink here and I'm ink blending this on with the new Alt New ink blending tool. And it blends beautifully, you guys. I really enjoy this blending brush so much. So I'm just gonna peel off the post-it note tape and then I'll reapply those same pieces. And I wish I had done new pieces because I'm going to, I am ink blending on some coral berry here and it because the post-it note tape has like a coating on it, it picked up some of the yellow and turned this pink a little more yellow in the center than what you'll see on the edges. So on the edges of this post-it note tape, I didn't have any yellow, so it didn't pick that up. And look at the difference between the center and the color on the edge. A lot more yellow in the center. So just keep that in mind if you're using post-it tape. So I did one more pink stripe here down the center, and then super easy, we're just gonna add some cinnamon strips and this card will be done. I love it, you guys. I'm totally loving yellow these days. I used to never use yellow. I feel like I use yellow all the time now. Um, so all of these cinnamon strips are from that same set from Simon Says Stamp, and I still have so many more to use. Here are the finished cards, you guys. I hope that you enjoyed these projects today and these four ways to use the stamp set. There are so many other ways that you can do it. You could do some spotlight coloring where you color just one of them and fussy cut some out and pop those up. On a black and white background I think would be really striking. Be sure to check out Simon Says Stamps Gallery and I'll have a link down below to the rest of their release as well. Thanks so much for joining me today. If you enjoyed this video please consider subscribing, liking, and ringing that bell so you don't miss any new inspiration. Here's a couple more videos for you before you leave and I'll see you real soon.